The wave of political turmoil consuming the Middle East right now, hitting very close to home for one mother in Bahrain. She's now starving herself, starving herself, in a desperate attempt to try to save her family. Here's CNN's Amber Lyon. Zainab al Khawaja says she is ready to starve to death unless Bahraini authorities release her father and husband. If my father is going to be killed, I want to die as well. Uh, we've always been taught by my father dying with dignity is better than living as slaves. The 27-year-old is on a hunger strike, even though she has a one-year-old daughter, Jude. <laughs> She's looking at this picture of me and her dad. That's why she keeps saying blah, 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 blah. Ben? It's really funny. Look at this one. He's always doing funny things to make people laugh. <laughs> How can you uh, starve to death and, and leave, leave your daughter to be raised by someone who's not her, her mother? If it was just about my daughter, I would never do this. I'd rather spend every day of my life with her and see her grow up. But on the other hand, I'm not willing to stay silent. A week ago, security forces burst into her home searching for her father, Abdul Hadi Al Khawaja, a prominent human rights activist. They started beating him severely and they dragged him down the stairs, threw him on the ground and um, five, four or five men were kicking him and punching him and one of them had his hand on my father's throat the whole time. And the, the last thing I heard my father say was that he, he couldn't breathe. He was gasping for air and saying that he couldn't breathe. Security forces also took her brother-in-law and her husband. And Zainab's family is not alone. Human Rights Watch says Bahraini police forces have detained more than 430 people in recent weeks, often violently, late at night, using armed, masked security men. Four people have died while in custody in the past two weeks. Kareem Fakwari, a blogger and founder of an opposition newspaper, Human Rights Watch says photos of his body show disturbing signs of torture. Bahraini officials say he died of kidney failure. The U.S. State Department is calling for investigations into these deaths. We are uh, aware of the death and we're obviously, um, we are deeply concerned uh, by uh, the deaths of uh, both him and, and several other individuals while in custody of uh, Bahraini authorities and we would call on the government of Bahrain to conduct complete and transparent investigations into all these deaths. The State Department has been quick to denounce regimes in Egypt, Syria, Libya, but its tone towards Bahrain has been much more muted. The tiny island is home port to the U.S. Fifth Fleet, but as the number of detained and dead keeps rising, the kingdom's Shiite majority is looking to Washington to take a stand. Zainab wrote a letter to President Obama asking him for help. Uh, what's making it so much more difficult for us and what, the reason we have to suffer so much more is because the American administration is standing behind the dictator and giving him the, the green light to do whatever he wants with the people of Bahrain. All I want from the American administration, I don't want them to save the people of Bahrain. I don't want an intervention. All I want is for them to stop supporting the Al Khalifa regime, who have proved now more than ever that they are corrupt, that they, that they care only about their thrones, that they are willing to kill and torture. Amber Lyon, CNN, Atlanta. The sister of the woman you just saw in Amber's piece is here in Washington, D.C. today, where demonstrations took place against the government of Bahrain. She spoke with our foreign affairs correspondent, Jill Doherty, outside the gates of the White House. Well, for here in front of the White House with Miriam Al Hawaja, she is a human rights activist, 23 years old, lives in Bahrain, but you're here for about a month and a half, right? That's right. Now, the group is marching this way, actually from the Saudi embassy, and now to the White House. What is the message to the president? Well, the, pro the protesters in Bahrain uh, believe that the U.S. is directly complicit in the violations taking place in the country. And complicit in what way? Well, I mean, everyone knows that the GCC countries and, the, and Bahrain in particular is, are very close allies to the U.S. government. And the U.S. has yet to take a strong stand against the violations happening. Uh -huh. And Saudi Arabia, the, when you were demonstrating over there, 
Why exactly is, were you doing that? It's because of the Saudi involvement inside Bahrain. I mean, the government of Bahrain likes to say that the GCC forces have only been in certain areas and have not taken part in the attacks or the campaign. But uh, according to testimonies made by the citizens of Bahrain, the Saudis have actually been very uh, complicit in taking part in the camp campaigns of attacks and terror. Hmm. And have you had any word of your father? No, not so, not so whatsoever. Did, well. That must make you very worried. Definitely. I mean, as a human rights activist, I've uh, documented many cases about the kind of torture that takes place within the Bahraini prisons. And so it makes me very worried about what they might be going through right now. It could be anything from physical, to psychological, to even sexual torture. Do you get worried yourself about this? I mean, if demonstrating or going back? Well, I mean, one of the reasons I'm not going back right now is because I know I'm under very high risk uh, of arrest or disappearance. Um, and I think I play a much more important role here by bringing the message from Bahrain and making sure that the Bahrainis' voices are heard. Mm, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So Miriam Al-Hawaja, human rights activist from Bahrain, and back to you, Wolf.